Elements, Compounds, and Mixtures. In this video lecture, I want to talk about the Tower of Matter we created in our notes last week. This is it. You'll notice the idea here is that we go from more simple forms of matter to more complex forms down at the bottom. First, we'll start out with atoms. Atoms are the form that all matter takes, which is why I'll include it in our Tower of Matter. If you want to know more about atoms, you can watch the atoms video a little earlier in the series. Next up is elements. All elements are atoms, but they're all different. The reason elements are different from each other is because the number of the number of protons you find in the nucleus, known as the atomic number. Elements can take two forms. They can either be a pure element, which is a substance that's made of only one element, such as a gold bar only being made of gold, or oxygen gas only being made of oxygen. If you're classifying matter, uh, you'll call an element anything that appears on the periodic table. So if it's on the periodic table, it's an element. Elements can also be part of larger structures, called a compound. Now, a compound is a joining together of two or more elements. It's kind of like how Lego blocks join together. Uh, some examples of compounds are water, which is H2O. Uh, another example is salt. I guess I'll... There's some little dots there. Salt, which is N-A-C-L, which is sodium chloride. And a final example is sugar. Now, sugar is a little more complex than the ones before. And again, sugar is like little dots. Sugar is C6H12O6. So that's six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens come together to form one molecule or one piece of sugar. When you're classifying matter, a compound will appear as two or more elements together, and it'll often have numbers like this to designate the number of elements in the compound. Finally, we have the most complex form of matter, which is a mixture. A mixture is a combination of two or more compounds or pure elements. There are two different types of mixtures. Homogeneous, which means they look the same throughout, and heterogeneous, which means they look different. You can tell the difference between the parts. So the homogeneous mixture looks the same. For example, a glass of water with sugar or salt dissolved into it. You can't tell the difference between the salt and the water. Uh, another example of a homogeneous mixture is air. Air is made up of many different elements. Uh, oxygen gas, nitrogen gas, there's some hydrogen, there's neon. You can't tell the difference between the different parts of air. So it's a homogeneous mixture. You cannot tell where the individual parts are. In a heterogeneous mixture, you can tell the different parts of the mixture apart from each other. Uh, one example of a heterogeneous mixture would be a pizza. You, know, you have the crust, you have the pepperonis, uh, the cheese. Uh, salad would be another example. And also um, paint that hasn't mixed well. So there's so some types of paints where you have to mix them up before you use them. Otherwise, they'll be the paint stuff on the bottom, and the layer of clear liquid on top, and you'll have this like goopy stuff before it's been mixed together. When you're classifying matter, uh, I will represent a mixture as uh, having a plus sign. So for example, salt water would be H2O plus NaCl. So you'll know a mixture by the plus sign, and you'll have to use your prior knowledge to determine whether it's going to be homogeneous, whether it's going to look the same throughout, or heterogeneous, which means it's going to look different throughout. A glass of water with 